All right, we're finally going to move on to CSS, getting some styles in here. We've done all the major um, HTML content, and with, with just these basic headings, paragraphs, images, links, and lists, you can make a lot of different websites. Okay, those are kind of some of the fundamental HTML elements you should be familiar with. Um, but now we're going to add some styles. We're going to look at how to do the styles. We're going to link to this style.css, our external style sheet. We'll talk about element selectors, um, the color style property, how we can change different colors, and, and I'll show you this resource. I probably should have mentioned it before, but I'll give you this resource that you can use to help uh, look up stuff. Okay, so first things first, let's link to our external style sheet. So remember, the body is where we have all of our visible content, right? The things that show up on the page. And our head was kind of for information about the website. This is the title of the website that the browser uses to display in the tab and search engines would use to display if this was a live website. Well, in the head is also a good place for us to say, well, what else do we want to know about this website? Oh, this website uses this style sheet, right? It tells the browser to say, hey, use whatever is inside of this file as the styles for this page, for this HTML document, right? So again, I'm just going to use Emmet. I'm going to type the word link and hit tab. And it, by default, gives me a style sheet link. And the href is just going to be the name of the file. And because index.html and style.css are in the same folder, I can just type the name of the file and save. And now this website will use whatever styles are in this file, which is nothing. So we don't see anything different. But now I can start writing CSS in here. So HTML is its own language, HTML hypertext markup language, right? It, it describes what's a heading, what's an image, what's a paragraph, all this good stuff. Um, style, the CSS cascading style sheets, it's kind of its own language. It has its own syntax and its own rules as well. And the basic way it works is we're going to have a selector and then curly brackets like that. They're called braces. And then um, in between the braces is we do the CSS properties. And each property gives you like a color, colon, and then the color that you want to do. And then a semicolon. Font family, whatever font family I want. Okay, now this lists more than one font family, but they're like fallback fonts. Don't worry about it. But anyway, you can list as many of these, these kind of properties, these value pairs as we want. All right. So whatever element I select, these properties would get applied to that element. Okay, well, how do I, I'm just going to get rid of these for a second. How do I select elements? Well, the first thing we're going to learn about is just an element selector. And you simply use the name of the element. So, for example, an H1 element. So we don't have to do the angled brackets. You just go H1. And that will select all H1 elements. And let's just go color uh, red for now. I'm going to save that. And we go here. And you'll see that my H1 is now red. Yay. Um, and we can quickly, oh, see if I, see, this is kind of cool. VS Code, again, it's built for web design, right? When I hover over it, I can actually choose cut different colors. Now you'll notice there's only so many color names. So when you don't do a color name, you can do these RGB. It basically stands for the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue um, from 0 to 255. 0 is no red, 255 is full red. Right? So anyway, you can kind of select colors from this built-in color picker tool thing that's here. Um, or you can use these color names. Again, VS Code, when you start typing, it does, actually even here, it gives you this whole list of all sorts of different color names. Now this also, this is the hex code for it. So color names, hexadecimal codes, or RGB values. Um, basically the first hexadecimal is just a different number system, uh, different than our decimal system we use. But the first two control the amount of red, the next two control the amount of blue, uh, or no, red, green, amount of green, and then the amount of blue. So black is 0, 0, 0, N none of either color, so it's black. Whereas white, if I typed white, is F is the highest hexadecimal value, so it's full red, full green, full blue to get white. Okay, and actually I'm going to jump to W3Schools here, because W3Schools, let's make this larger for a second, it has an HTML tutorial, it has a CSS tutorial, 
So if you want to learn more or look up things, right, look, this shows this basic page structure we talked about before. You can look up elements and attributes and headings and paragraphs. Um, so this is a good reference. Um, I, there's way more here than we're going to learn in this course. So you don't have to know everything on this page. But if you're looking at some of the basic stuff here, you can, can look it up here. There's also a CSS tutorial, all sorts of tutorials with W3Schools. Okay, so if we wanted to look up colors, see HTML colors, there's color names, right? Um, we'll talk about background colors later, border colors, color values can be RGB, hex, HSL, you can even do transparency. Learn more about colors and you can learn about RGB colors here. And they have little sliders and you can change things. Anyway, so lots of places to explore the different colors and stuff. Okay, for the purpose of this though, the main thing I wanted you to see was that, yeah, we do the selector and then we can select the color. Uh, let's go with purple this time and save. Give us a little preview, that's nice. Uh, let's minimize this again. Okay, there's my purple. Now, what if I did an H2? There's two H2 elements. So when you do an element selector, it actually will select all of those elements, right? The styles that we put in here will apply to all of the elements. Uh, let's also do a text decoration underline, right? We underline them like that. So whatever styles are between these braces, the curly brackets, these styles apply to this element that we're selecting. All right, so you can select things that way. We could do um, our li elements. We could give a font family of, and it gives me a bunch of different font fonts we could do. Let's try, I don't know, Courier New. Now, the way font families work is it's going to try to do this font, but not all fonts are supported by every computer. So if it can't find that font, it'll go with a Courier. If it can't find that font, it'll just do a generic monospace font. So we save that, and now it changed it. Ah, oh, crazy. Okay, so those are the LI elements. Anyway, we're not going to do that right now. I just wanted to show you the basic idea of the selector, and then we're going to try to style these things. Um, maybe what we will do here is let's go, I want to go with a maroon to kind of match the color of the jam maybe a little bit. And then I wanted to show you, um, <clears throat> we can actually do, a grouping selector as well. Let me add that to my notes, notes here. Element selector and a grouping selector. And you can actually say, I want to go select all my H1 elements and then a comma and then all my H2 elements. All right. And then whatever styles I apply here, let's go back to the website here. So let's say I wanted both of them to have a font family of Verdana maybe. Okay, and again, that gives me the, the backup fonts. Save that, and you'll see that it changed. The H1s and the H2s got changed to Verdana. Yeah, so if you have something that's common, you can group them together like that. But I can still have the H1 separate here so that it has its own color, because if I wanted the H2s to have separate colors, I could still, I could still do that. Right? Okay, cool. All right. Um, what else was in my notes here? We link to the external style sheet. All right, that's that link right here. The element selector and the grouping selector, and then the color styles that we looked at. Well, I did type a whole bunch of different properties. I don't expect you to know all the different properties, but there's some common common ones that we'll get familiar with as we go through this. Um, and, and like W3Schools, if you go to the CSS tutorial, you'll be able to learn lots of backgrounds, colors, margins, padding, text, fonts, and learn about all the different styles and stuff in here. Like I said, there's way more here than we need to know. We're just learning the basics, just the basics. Okay, hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.